Good afternoon, everyone. It's, uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Somewhat blinding, but uh, it's great. Uh, was anyone here in the, in the session just a moment ago with Joe Malone? People in here? That was fantastic, wasn't it? It was great for me to really understand and listen to how uh, somebody that, is, uh, that developed such a strong brand and strong company 25 years ago is trying to do the same today and how she's realized that the business environment has changed and the way that the way that you develop a company and the insight and intelligence you need to bring into that company has changed. It's really interesting to hear the reference about uh, on the day of the launch, the uh, checking out the Google search results page and seeing another company at the top of those lists. So it actually really brings to life that today we now need to look at a market at a global level. It's not just about looking in your local region uh, because there are competitors everywhere and competitors you've never even heard of or thought of. And people are actually... Uh, working in your environment using your words and your brands and such like that are coming from different markets. So what I want to talk to you about this afternoon is uh, I just want to spend about 30 minutes talking to you about the way that I see the world moving, the way that I see the internet underpinning that, the way that technology is driving everything forward, the way that technology is accelerating. And it's the speed of the acceleration that is quite dramatic and quite frightening if I'm being honest. And at Google, we think there's a, a key killer app that has been forgotten, and that is the killer app of speed. Being able to be agile, being able to build your business and be dynamic in that business in a very quick and fast way. So let me start by putting some context around the situation. So this is uh, some data from last year, and I'm not going to show too much uh, data to you today. Uh, I do work for Google, so I am supposed to show you lots of slides. Uh, but I'll, uh, I'll try and keep the data to a minimum. So what do we see here? That end of last year, about 2 billion people globally are online. It's about 4.8 billion mobile phone subscriptions out there. And there's about 800 exabytes of data that were created. Now, does anyone in the room know what an exabyte of data is? No, no actually, I don't know either, if I'm being completely honest. Somebody once described it to me as 10 to the power of 18. So that's 10 with 18 zeros after. Still doesn't mean anything to me. Let me try and put it into context in a little bit more detail. Between the beginning of time and 2003, we had created five exabytes of data. We did that in just over two days in 2010. So there's this huge acceleration in the amount of information that's being created. Let me give you an example. Uh, I've got a 10-year-old son. My son often picks up my mobile phone. Uh, it's an Android mobile phone. I just thought I'd have to say that. Um, and uh, he picks it up, and he creates a video. And he creates that video, and it doesn't cost him anything, and it's very quick and easy to do. And within three or four minutes, he's posted it online. He's posted it on YouTube. And he's got access to 2 billion people. And that's a 10-year-old boy doing that. Just think about in your businesses how you're creating content and how you're using content and how important that is. How many people in the room are, uh, are on Facebook? Yeah, Facebook. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, probably about 80 or 90% of you. Well, on Facebook, in the last 12 months or so, they've actually added about 250 million additional users. So that's a huge acceleration in the number of people that are actually using that particular site. And new users on Facebook are actually sharing 30 billion pieces of information per month. So again, there's a huge amount of data floating around the internet. Anyone here on Twitter? Anyone here tweeting right now? Right, OK, I've completely changed my speech. <laughs> um, but on Twitter, it's, what is it, six or, uh, or 800 tweets per second. So again, a huge amount of content that's happening. And on YouTube, let me give you an example on YouTube. 48 hours of video are uploaded onto YouTube per minute. So that's 48 hours of video onto YouTube per minute. I don't know about you guys, I just never realized there were that many skateboarding cats. <laughs> but it's not just that. It is an entertainment channel, but it's not just that. It's just an example of how we are creating and developing more content because we are all out there, and we are now consuming that content in more increasing volumes. If we move forward a few years, what's the situation going to be? Well, we're going to see a huge increase in the number of people online, 
as internet penetration uh, broadens out globally. The really critical piece on this for me is the rise of mobile. Mobile will become the internet access device of choice. I'm sure you've all got, so actually I'll ask the question, how many people in the room have got a smartphone, so a phone with a full internet browser? Yeah, pretty much everyone has got one of those. And again, the way that we're using that is actually changing the way that we uh, act and react. So there's a huge amount of data that is being created out there, and we're aggregating that together. And this provides us a wonderful set of information and insight that we can actually change our business. We can in, uh, provide that information into our business to change the way that we act and react. So there's three key themes I want to talk about this afternoon. The first one is going to be around this real-time insight, real-time information. It's about being real-time in your business. It's about being dynamic and agile and reacting to situations. The second element is very much around personal. The web is becoming personal. It's no longer a broadcast mechanism of one message to many people. You're able to hone that in and talk to individuals and groups of individuals. And then finally, it's going to be about the rise of mobile and how mobile is dramatically changing everything that we do. Does this all make sense? Are you all comfortable, yeah? So if we can just go to uh, the computer, please. See, too much technology. Can't remember which bit's turned on. OK, so let's uh, have a look uh, online. Has, has anyone used this tool called Insights for Search? Anyone? One, two, two or three? three. OK, there's two or three people uh, that have used Insights for Search. I'll go through that in a moment. First, firstly, I'll just start by, um, have you seen this here where we've got something called uh, Google Instant? So before I finish typing something, it comes up and tells me, gives me some suggestions. This is a, a, a really useless fact. But we calculate that if every, uh, by using Google Instant, you'll save between two and five seconds per search. And if everyone did that globally, it would save 11 hours of time per minute. Now, I, I can't get my head around that, but that's what it'll do. It'll save all that time. So then we've got plenty more time to uh, spend on Facebook. Um, so if you uh, just do a quick search, Insights for Search, hopefully it'll be top of the Google results page. Uh, if it's not, uh, then please let me know. And this is, um, this is a tool that is there to provide you real insight and understanding of what your customers and prospects are doing. This is market intelligence on the fly. This, uh, it, you know, and it's in real time as well. And real time insights is, uh, uh, can provide a real difference to your business. So let's, uh, let's do a quick uh, test on this here. So United Kingdom, uh, last seven days. Um, what I'm going to do is identify the fastest growing searches in the last seven days on uh, Google in the UK. Does anyone have any ideas what they might be? Joe Malone. Joe Malone. <laughs> it's, it's instant, but not quite that instant. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs? Blackberry. Blackberry. Well, he would if they worked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, can you cut that, please? Um, OK, so let's have a look. I think, uh, I think we might be on, on to something with, uh, with Steve Jobs. So what we see in the last seven days, these are the fastest rising searches uh, in the UK. So Steve Jobs has risen by 3,500%. Uh, the health lottery, uh, Euro millions, um, Formula One. So this gives us a real view into the zeitgeist of what's happening here and today. So over the last seven days, what have people been looking for? Now, this is quite interesting and entertaining because it's at that sort of level, but it can provide real insight and value to your business. Let me just uh, try something here and actually go back and do this on a global level. And let's see what, uh, what the key rising searches are. So what we have here is uh, Al Davis, uh, something in what looks like Russian to me, and then lots of Steve, jo Steve Jobs. Now, the power of technology is I'm going to demonstrate to you here. So this looks Russian to me. I haven't the faintest idea what it says. So let's, uh, let's go and have a look. And it's still in Russian, so I have no idea what it says. But you see here, it's just popped up at the top of the screen, suggesting it will translate. And in real time, we're actually using 
uh, cloud-based computing to translate this page into English for us. Uh, and again, it shows that it's uh, Steve Jobs. But again, it just shows the power of technology and how that is changing the way that we act as consumers and will change the way that we act as businesses. So let's go back here. And let's run uh, another very brief uh, test. So we all uh, Strictly Come Dancing fans? Or is it just me? So again, this is another way of using this. And you can actually see over, um, over time the number and the volume and the popularity of particular search terms. So I've, I've used Strictly Come Dancing here. And what we see back in 2004, there was a little peak. And it's been getting steadily bigger and bigger and bigger at the time that the program's airing up until 2009 or so. And then it's flattened out a little bit. But again, it shows that during the time that this is on television, there's huge interest in that. But that only gives you one dimension. Let's think about it in another dimension and see if there's another program that might come up against it. What do we think? Higher or lower? About the same? Higher. Higher. And what we see there in the red line is a dramatic increase in its, it, over the period of time of the, the amount of searches that are taking place for, for X Factor. And again, it's kind of a lighthearted way of doing this, uh, but it shows that it's information and insight that's there that you can actually bring into your business. So if you are selling perfume, or you are in the plumbing trade, or you are an accountant, you can actually go in and use this insight to understand what's happening uh, in your particular part of the market. And you can actually build that down to your location as well, down to the UK and regions within that. So if we could just go back to the slides, please. What I want to do is now actually give you a real-life business example of where somebody has actually used this data to transform their business. And again, all of this data is for free. You simply go onto Google and, uh, and search for insights for search. So these are, this is searches for chicken huts uh, uh, from 2006 onwards. And you can see back in 2006, there weren't that many people searching for chicken huts. I'm not quite sure why people search for them now, but somebody obviously does, because you can see in uh, 2008, it went through the roof. Lots of people started looking for chicken huts. Well, that's kind of interesting, if you like chickens and like chicken huts. But there were a couple of guys, uh, Joe Murray and Richard Tucker, that actually used this insight to understand, well, hang on, there's an opportunity there. There's a rapid increase in people looking for this uh, particular product. What can I do about it? Well, they looked, they used this data, they used some other data that's available, uh, and, uh, and developed a company called uh, Chicken Houses World. Snappy title. Um, and so what they did is they built the business based on the insight they've got from online data. They realized there's an opportunity. They checked out the competition wasn't particularly high there. They've gone and sourced people to build this uh, in China build the product in China, and bring it back. And that's great. This is a business that came from nowhere by spotting an opportunity that users are looking for this kind of product. Well, that's great. So they've developed that. So what have they gone on and done? Well, they've gone on and actually built another 76 of these types of companies. Again, using that insight, spotting the opportunity uh, where users and uh, consumers are looking for product and realizing the potential. So by using that, they've gone from zero uh, to a $40 million company with a 70% year-on-year growth over a matter of three or four years. So by using this opportunity and using this data, and it's all about real-time data that, um, uh, that can actually help provide this real insight. So if we can go back to the uh, computer just for a moment. There we go. Anyone in the, in the room do, do, who, who export that have businesses overseas, that have clients overseas? Yeah, it's a few. Anyone in the room would like to tap into that international opportunity? Yeah, a few more hands going up. State of our economy, I think it would, might be an interesting idea. So there's another, um, 
another tool called Google um, Market Finder where you can actually identify, well, what are those trends and what's the competition in other countries? So again, we'll put this as uh, the UK. Should we stay on the theme of uh, chickens? And this automatically identifies the countries where the, there's the greatest interest in these particular products and actually identifies uh, what the competition level's like. So, for example, for chicken huts, uh, it's in France. Um, there's uh, 90,000 searches per month, uh, and, uh, and, and the competition is reasonably high. So, actually, from that, you can identify where it is to, uh, uh, to, to open your, uh, your next business or to target. And it actually even translates it for you and tells you the terms that they're, uh, uh, that they're looking for in that country. So if we can come back to the uh, slides, please. Um, so again, these are just some free tools that can uh, help you understand what's happening in the market and where the market is moving to. So it's about real-time insight. I'll just very briefly give you one other, uh, uh, other anecdote, is that um, uh, the color blue is really important to Google. Does anyone know why the color of blue is really important to Google? No? Perfect marketing. Nobody recognizes it. Uh, actually, the link on a Google results page is blue, uh, the link that you click on, and Google makes its money by people clicking on those links. Uh, we ran a test on that color blue, and we tested over 40 different colors, blue, colors of blue to identify which had the, the highest click-through rate, uh, because obviously the more people that click on it, the more uh, money we will make. And we chose the blue that had fractionally the highest click-through rate on that, which has actually generated somewhere in the region of 200 million extra dollars for us a year. So again, understanding and using that real-time insight that you can get by tracking your website uh, is really important. So that's all about data. It's all about the crowd out there and aggregating that and understanding what's, what that means to your business. But the second key theme is that the web is, and the internet is becoming the people's web. It's all about us as individuals. For me, it's really interesting that uh, you know, the internet is finally catching up with the physical world. I don't know about you guys, but you know, 10 years ago, if I had a joke, I would go to my friends and share that joke. Or if I had some gossip, I'd go and share that gossip. If I wanted to uh, have a go at somebody or a company, I would go and do it in my circle of friends. Well, now the internet is finally catching up with us. And the way that people are using social is actually helping us do so, so that we now can share that information and insight uh, and uh, gossip or whatever. Uh, across the web. So it's, it also becomes very personal as well. So the web becomes personal. It's not all about all of this data. It's about what you do as an individual online and how you act and how you react and your journey to wherever you want to go. And to illustrate that, I'd just like to uh, just briefly show a short video. So if we could uh, run the video, please. So again, I think that just demonstrates how uh, the information that's been collected online actually really provides an understanding of the journeys and the emotions and the feelings that people are going through. I'd like to ask a quick question. Does anyone know who this chap is? Any ideas? Sorry? No? No? No, it's not. I didn't realize. My god, that's quite remarkable. Um, actually, you're not supposed to know who this guy is because it's my friend Alex. He looks like Olly Murs. 
When he grows his hair a bit longer, he looks a bit like Hugh Fernley uh, Whittingstall as well. But uh, anyway, perhaps I'll change the photo. I'm not sure. But uh, no, this is, uh, this is my friend Alex. And Alex is a really top guy. He has to be. He's one of my friends. Um, and, uh, but Alex is a bit of an intellectual. Uh, he loves books. Uh, he's uh, he's a, an avid reader. He's an avid uh, film goer. Loves movies. He's always out there going to movies. And he, he loves restaurants as well. Um, and he, you know, he often writes uh, po uh, post comments on restaurant sites and such and such like. So, whenever I want, you know, a recommendation on something uh, around a film or around a book or whatever, then I tend to go to Alex. Um, but actually, I don't see Alex as frequently as I would like to. Um, so it's actually sometimes quite difficult to uh, to get him on the phone and, phone and say, well, you know, what movie should I go and watch or what book uh, would you recommend? What are you reading at the moment? And now, as I said, there's this transition of moving this kind of social environment online as well. There's an opportunity to do that. So if we could go to the, uh, the computer again, please. So as I said, he's, uh, Alex is... Um, pretty good on uh, film reviews and movies. Uh, and so I'm doing a search about film reviews, and I'm, I'm scanning down, and I suddenly think, hang on a second. Here's my friend Alex. He's actually plus one that site to say that he likes that site. He likes the reviews on that site. He likes what that site has to say. So in about uh, June time this year, we launched something called uh, Plus One, which enables uh, sites to put a uh, a little button on their website so that people can actually recommend it. Uh, and why is that great? Well, it's great for me because I now know that when I go online, I can see sites that my people within my circles, people that I'm, uh, you know, I, I trust and respect their opinions, I can see where they've gone and what they've liked. It makes it a lot easier for me to actually find information that I'm looking for. I was, um, I was on a flight last week. Uh, I was flying long haul. And... Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I struggle on airplanes. It's never comfortable enough, and you know it's always too tight, and it's, oh, it's just a hideous experience. So I really look forward to the movies. Um, and, uh, and what I did, actually, so I actually went, and, uh, I went online to try and understand what, what movies BA was showing at the time, and then find, actually try and get a recommendation on which movie uh, I would want to watch. And so the experience I did was, actually, I thought, Midnight in Paris. That sounds like quite a good movie. And have a scan through this and think, oh, there's lots going on here. Look, it's got lots of star ratings, so that's approvals. That's great. That means lots of people have approved the movie, but nobody I know really. So if we just scan down here, and we start to see uh, that actually several of my contacts have actually recommended that movie. So, it's, I mean, it's a real-life story. I did this uh, last Wednesday, and, um, and then I got on the flight on Wednesday afternoon and went and I, I watched that movie. I probably won't be plus one in it, though. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't win every time. So, um, so, again, it's the power of having these contacts and having that brought to you, which is really important. So now I can understand where I'm, wherever I'm on the, online, I can actually see whether anybody in my circles, any one of my contacts, has been there, has recommended it, has posted comments on it. And that's very powerful. It's about the uh, peer recognition uh, of particular sites and products. So if we can go back to the slides, please. So I guess the next step is very much around, well, that's me going out looking for information. What about me or, or Alex? Uh, what about that coming back? And people actually being able to provide information that are appropriate and really specific and relevant to him as he's going about his daily life. So imagine, as I said, he's, uh, he's a bit of a, he's quite cultural, he likes, uh, likes books. Imagine if he's being targeted uh, with appropriate, relevant content that's saying, come to an exclusive uh, book reading at my bookstore on this date. So you're not mass marketing that to everyone, you're identifying the people you're looking for and you're directing it to them. He's also into vintage clothing. He actually says, I'm into vintage clothing. It's not that I just, it's just that I haven't changed my wardrobe for many years. 
And uh, so imagine uh, if there's a store there that knows that he's into vintage clothing, he goes to those kind of websites, they're able to serve him offers as he wants, when he wants. So it's really important about not only about how, where, where you go and find information, it's about how information is starting to come to you. And this whole behavioral context uh, for, for marketing and advertising is going to be very powerful and is already starting to be very powerful. So the final piece I want to talk about is, uh, is mobile. And this, for me, is the dramatic piece of what's happening in the future. It's happening today, but how it's going to accelerate everything. So I've already asked. Everyone in the room's pretty much got a smartphone. So hands up, those of you that take your phone to bed with you. OK, it doesn't have to be under the pillow. It can be next to the bed. OK, so that's probably about half. Research, research shows but it's about 45% of people take their mobile phones to bed with them. I don't, um, but you know, everyone's uh, uh, to their own. Have you ever been into a pub where somebody's come up with their brand new laptop and said, look at my new laptop, isn't it nice and shiny and it can do and this and this? No, but people do that with their mobile phones. They take their mobile phones everywhere with them. It's the most personal piece of uh, technology that we have. I don't know about you guys, but if I leave home and say I've driven 15 minutes away from home and I think, darn, I've left my mobile phone at home, I will turn around and I will go back home. People do that, or is it just me? No? Okay, it's just me. But if I left my son at home and I've driven 15 minutes away, <laughs> well, he's 10, he can kind of look after himself. But it just shows how personal that piece of... Uh, a uh, piece of technology is. So if we look at uh, smartphones, smartphones uh, in 2010 were only about a quarter of phones in the UK. Uh, if we fast forward 12 months, and this is out of date now because uh, things are moving so quickly, but it's a third of mobile phones are smartphones. That means people are actually getting online a lot more. They're searching a lot more. We see a 50 uh, times increase in the amount of search activity people do from a smartphone as opposed to a fe standard feature phone. And for you guys running businesses, the question I would be asking you is, have you viewed your website via your mobile phone? Actually, I will ask that question. How many people have viewed their website via their mobile phone? OK, keep your hands up if you thought it was a great experience. OK, well, we've got five, five companies. Do you know how many, what percentage of people coming to your website are coming from mobile devices? These are basic questions you need to be asking because it's really important. It will grow. Uh, I think that uh, research is showing, Comscore and people like that are showing that in excess of 10% of all site vis visits are coming uh, from, uh, from mobile devices. In certain sectors, that's a lot higher. So understanding how your website uh, renders in a mobile environment is really important because increasingly people will be accessing, accessing it in that way. So what I'd like to do now is, um, is if we could go to the, oh, actually, I can go to the visualizer. Uh, if we can go to the visualizer, please. I just want to show, uh, hopefully, the technology will work, give some examples of, um, of how mobile is actually changing the way that we act and that we react. So. I don't know about you guys, but I'm uh, on the move a lot. I'm wandering around a lot. So um, I use my mobile phone. So when I'm searching for something, get it around the right way. Uh, and I will often uh, speak into it. Accountants in Manchester. Accountants in Manchester. So you know what they say, never work with children, animals, or live demos. OK, okay so um, I'm not sure if you can see that there. But that's come up. Simple voice search, the accountants in Manchester, and the maps related to that. We're seeing about a third of all searches on mobile devices having a local element to it. So people saying, you know, pizza in 
Chester or whatever it might be. So understanding the way that the search habits and people's habits are changing is really important. And I don't know about you, today's been, uh, have you, you enjoyed today? Has today been good so far? Apart from this session, obviously. But, but I don't know about you, but uh, for me, in probably about 15 minutes, uh, I'm going to be pressing this button here, which uh, hopefully will give me a search for uh, pubs in Manchester. Uh, so the mobile phone actually can recognize where I am. It understands where I am in the country, uh, and then can actually serve back results to me uh, that are really, uh, really relevant to where I am. So I can sc scan down through here and identify somewhere to go uh, for, that, uh, for that gin and tonic. But the other thing is, uh, I'll just tell you a quick story. Um, and it involves my son again. I do apologize to him. He never actually hears me speak, and I'm talking about him three times today. Um, two weekends ago, uh, my wife was away, and I was left with the household duties and everything. So as a typical father, we went out. Um, and we, <laughs> we went out, and we went, we went cycling. And I, I live in the countryside, so we just got on the bikes, took the dog, ran its legs off, and just went cycling. And then it suddenly dawned on me, it was, you know, it's late on Saturday afternoon, we're three or four miles away from, uh, from anywhere, I'm on my bike, and my wife's coming back on Sunday. And it's like, damn, I haven't done the shopping. I've really got to do the shopping. And it's kind of, well, have I got time to cycle back, get in the car, then go to the supermarket? Well, there's no need to do that anymore. And I, and I didn't do that. I simply just went on to uh, an app here, has anyone else got the Ocado app? Yeah, awesome, very... You know. Am I the first bloke that you've seen with the Ocado app? Yeah. I love it. I don't... Um, let me see if this can uh, focus a little bit more. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but basically what that's done is immediately it's come up and it's told me the first booking time uh, slot available uh, that it can deliver. So it knows where I live, and it's telling me that it can deliver... Uh, between 9 and 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. That's fantastic. It's fantastic when you're stuck in the countryside on your bicycle um, realizing you haven't done any shopping. So how does this work? Again, voice activated. Bananas. I don't know if you can see that, but again, uh, bananas just come straight up. So it's very easy. It's all voice activated. I can then scan barcodes. So I can, I, I can go to my fridge and scan my barcode on the milk, and it will self-populate. And I can go back and simply click on previous orders I've made uh, to be able to then uh, populate that or, uh, the new order on that. So again, mobile is changing the way that we act and we react. So it means I can be outside playing more and in the shops less, which is, uh, which is great for me. So the other thing, the final thing I just wanted to show you is that uh, I've talked about um, the mobile from a communication perspective. Uh, I've talked about it from an information gathering perspective. The Ocado app is a great example from a shopping perspective. But it's also a problem solving perspective as well. Do, um, do any of you, did any of you pick up The Guardian today? No? Just me, right? <laughs> do any of you play Sudoku? Yeah? I'm about to ruin your life. OK. So I'm using an app called Google Goggles. And I'm just going to take a photograph of this puzzle. And this is where it doesn't work. I'll try that again. And so it's uh, immediately recognized that it's a puzzle, Sudoku puzzle. And then it's just uh, solving it for me in real time. So I love using that uh, when I'm on the airplane uh, or in the airport and somebody's actually uh, doing this. And I can do it within a couple of moments. So again, if, uh, if we can go back to the slides, please. Um, 
So again, the mobile is actually changing the way that we're acting and reacting today, and it will accelerate. As I said, mobile will become the device of choice uh, for accessing the internet. It will become our one single uh, primary uh, piece of technology that we take with us everywhere. Um, and I guess the three th key things I want you to think about as you leave, leave the room today, uh, first one is very much around use real-time insights and real-time data to change your business to understand what your customers are doing and how they're doing it and where they're doing it. This provides real insight and can dramatically help your business grow. Secondly, think personal. No longer think mass marketing. And I know that you're all experienced marketers and business owners and you're not doing that, but online can provide an excellent way of actually helping to target those people, those people that are looking for your products and services at a particular time. And then finally, do what we're doing. We've got a policy called uh, mobile first. That means that we do not develop anything and launch anything that doesn't work on a mobile device first because we feel it's so fundamentally important to our business moving forward. Okay, thank you very much. So um, I've got a couple of questions here. I, I, I thank Sage for uh, not using an Android tablet. Thank you very much uh, on that one. Um, Let's have a look here. Uh, uh, so, so GB has asked, uh, so is Google the name um, from Google, the number or not? Um, uh, I believe so that uh, Google, G-O-O-G-O-L, uh, is, uh, is 10 to the power of 100 uh, and was the uh, original idea for the, for the name of the company. Um, How does, uh, GB again asks, how does the data get culled from, uh, from the web, e.g. YouTube? Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, but basically the way that we collect information is that we send out, uh, uh, we crawl the web on a very regular basis, identify the websites and the content that's on those websites, and then pull that back in. Uh, and by caching a lot of that information means that we can provide the results very, very quickly. Um, there is always a challenge. Uh, and I'd always uh, recommend uh, anyone thinking about before they post something on the web, uh, do they really want to post it? Um, because it is quite difficult once content is up there to actually remove it completely. Um, Graham has uh, asked the question, if the future is mobile, does that mean that tablets are just going to be a fad? Um, that's a great question. Uh, we actually classify mobile to include tablets It's uh, at the moment, so it's very much part of that. Uh, interestingly enough, we've seen a huge uptick in the, the amount of tablets uh, being sold, uh, and anybody that's tracking their website uh, via uh, analytics, any analytics package, will no doubt be seeing a huge increase in the number of people accessing their website via tablets. So I personally don't think that tablets is a fad. I think that it's, uh, it will just increasingly take over from other desktop environments. So it'll be a joint between a mobile phone and a tablet as we move forward. Are there any questions from the floor? We have one in the center. Can we get a mic here, please? Hello. AdWords, why is it very expensive for small and micro businesses to actually try and get rid of all the negative words? Uh, I'm, so the question was, uh, AdWords, why is it so great? Um, <laughs> um, I'm not sure what you mean by expensive getting rid of the negative words. Every word that comes up, word that comes up um, you have to try and find out what the negative word for the day is going to be so that you can stop people putting that in the search engines. We've had people searching for, can you educate us in bookkeeping? You know, we actually deliver a bookkeeping service. We yeah. don't educate. But yeah. there's that many negatives. We spent six months getting rid of all the negatives mm -hmm. just so that we get the clicks that we need. Right, OK. Um, there are actually tools available uh, within the AdWords interface that means that you can actually uh, start to create those negatives. And there are some standard words, uh, uh, negative lists that, that are made available. I think one of the challenges are, is, though, if I'm being truly honest, is that 16% of all searches that Google will see today we have never seen before. And bearing in mind there's several billion searches we see a day, 
uh, it, is, it is quite challenging. But um, I think one way of doing it is maybe by doing uh, your match, sorry if this is getting a bit too feature function, but look at your match types. So if you want uh, books, then have the match type either as exact uh, rather than as broad match uh, or phrase match so that you can actually start to get rid of some of that negative piece uh, altogether. I'm not sure if that helps, but okay. Any other questions? There's one over here. Hello. Um, are there any plans to introduce business pages to Google Plus as opposed to personal identity? Um, it's a great question. Um, I th uh, how do I answer this? Uh, there are some, uh, some pilots taking place at the moment, um, and it would uh, appear to be, to me, to be a very natural progression to move towards business pages on Google+. Plus. Any other questions? Yes, what over here? I always worry when I ask questions because somebody always asks me, is it true that Google has a herd of goats? And it is, by the way, but uh, yes. Oh, yeah. I was just wondering how Google Android um, tablets are progressing. Um, I know that there are a lot of problems along the way and limitations and different brands did and didn't allow you to access to the Google Apps marketplace and things like that. Okay, uh, it's a question that unfortunately I, I'm not close enough to that part of the business to answer. Uh, what I would say is that we're seeing the tablet market go through the roof, and uh, Android-based tablets are a, a key part of that and a growing part of that as well. One over here, I think. Oh, hi. I um, just wanted to ask about search engine optimization and any tips for building a website, how to improve it. Um, I'm not a search engine optimization expert, um, but I'd uh, thoroughly recommend you, uh, you go onto Google and do webmaster, search for Google Webmaster Central, uh, and it's got 95% you know, of the tips and tricks you will ever want to know about how to optimize your website and opt uh, for search engines. Okay. One, one more question, if there is, or if I, is everyone? Oh. Yep, there's one at the back there. Hi. Um, if you're going to focus your um, budget, where should it be? Should it be on mobile optimization of your website or building an app? Uh, that is a very good question. Um, m uh, my colleague that's our mobile lead in Europe um, often uses the phrase, uh, a mobile app is not a mobile strategy. Um, and I, I tend to agree. I think. You need to, it depends on your business, what your business is, but if, you're, if, you're, if, if you've got a big customer set, then a mobile app works great. Uh, so that people will go to it all the time, uh, and that works very effectively. So Ocado is a great example of that. However, the vast majority of people are coming to many, many sites via, via browsers, so uh, directly over the internet um, via their mobile phone, uh, and therefore spending time and effort on your mobile site is, uh, is really important. That's it. Great. Thank you very much indeed.